In this video, I'm going to go over how I'm going to mount the cells I've bought. These are EVE 280K cells, which are very commonly used to build a DIY power wall. I said people in the box. Hey, hey, have, have you seen Average Joe's video about his Powerball and battery shelf? I left a comment in his video and said, well, you cannot use these terms. They are, they are solely being used in sunny hot Australia here. You have to come up with your own wording, man. I mean, what is he thinking? Okay, okay. It seems like uh, Andy from Off Grid uh, Garage wants the uh, Powerball name for himself. PowerShelf also seems to be the one of his ideas. Uh, Average Joe ran into this problem as well and uh, appears to have coined the uh, name Powerwall 2.0. So let me introduce you to the Power Basket 1.0. I know, it's a terrible name, but let's run with it. As I mentioned right back in episode one, the wall behind me is where I want to uh, mount the cells, up here. If you haven't seen the uh, previous videos, I've created a, a playlist on YouTube, and I'll put a link in the description below. Now, like Andy over in sunny hot Australia, I could have built a shelf and put the cells on it, but I would still have to find the room for uh, the fuses and the BMS, and I'd need some sort of uh, protection cover over the cells as well. And that's before you start to consider cell compression. Average Joe is currently in the middle of a similar project to mine. He's using prefabricated electrical cabinets, which is bolted to the wall. I could have used this as well. Uh, I also really like the, the look of the Seplos Mason uh, rack mount battery, um, except I don't really want a rack mount on my wall. It's gonna stick out far too far and I'd worry about it being top heavy. Uh, those cabinets also come with a BMS, which I'm also not likely to use. So that took me down the rabbit hole of designing my own battery enclosure, which can encompass the cells, fuses and BMS all in one neat package. At least that's the aim. I've used FreeCAD to design the battery enclosure. Here you can see I started with a single design for an EVE 280K cell. This is then multiplied up to the 16 cells required for a 48 volt battery pack. Between each cell I'm inserting an EVA foam spacer. This provides electrical insulation between the cells and also a small amount of give to allow the cell to expand and contract a very small amount. Wrapped around the cells is another electrical insulation sheet, ideally fiberglass board or similar material. Notice that the insulation sheet doesn't quite reach the full length of the cells. This is due to the compression that I'm going to put the cells under. I've designed a steel compression frame using off-the-shelf unistrut components. With hindsight, this is a mistake, as the unistrut is overkill in this situation. Not only is it heavy, it is also quite wide and bulky. However, as I've already bought the parts, I may as well carry on and use them. At the end of the string of cells is the compression plate. This will be screwed down on, into the unistrut rails to squash the cells together. I've left about a 15mm gap to compress the cells. Although I can always cut back the unistrut if I feel that the compression is not enough. On top of these compression plates is a tab to hold a cable support tray. This slides onto the top and is held in place with screws and 3D printed blocks. LFP cells like the EVE 280K model I've ordered cannot be charged at temperatures below 0 degrees Celsius, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. As I'm putting these cells in my unheated garage, I've decided to add insulation into the battery enclosure. I could also look at adding a heating element or a heating pad in the future if I find that it's frequently getting too cold in the winter. The insulation is 10mm thick sheets of uh, extruded polystyrene 
and form a complete wrap around the cells, including the base and lid. All of this is then wrapped in a steel enclosure I've designed. This laser cut and folded by a local company out of 1.2 mm sheet steel. Working our way to the front of the enclosure, I've designed a front panel with various cutouts. The first is a DIN mounting rail and bracket. This can hold standard circuit breakers to isolate the cells and also has some spare capacity for expansion if needed. Below this are uh, holes for, for a 250 amp bolt through battery terminal and provide a solid connection between the enclosure and the inverter. On the right of the front panel, mounting points for the DIY BMS controller and TFT screen are available. And below this, we've got capacity for push buttons um, to be mounted and further down, there's three keystone jack terminals, which are available to provide CAN bus and RS485 interface connections between the DIY BMS controller, the inverter and the current shunt. I've also included a few smaller pilot holes, which can be drilled out should I need to fit any additional equipment in the future. This is how the enclosure is delivered straight from the laser cutting manufacturer. It's um, bare mild steel, as you can see from this. So the first thing was to abrade this and uh, put some primer paint on it. Once the primer was dry, we covered it in uh, some truck bed liner, which gives it a nice uh, sort of black textured finish. Just out of a rattle can. A few more coats and this is done. So I think we'll wrap up today's video there. In the next one, I should actually have my hands on my cells I've ordered. So we can put together this battery box and uh, do all the wiring for that. If you haven't already, this would be a great time to uh, click the subscribe and like button. And as always, please leave me a comment. Uh, I do like to enjoy reading them and I'll try and re reply to as many as possible. If you want to support the channel, check me out on Patreon as well. See you in the next one.